Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Completionist. For this episode, uh, guys, I am going to do an impressions video uh, for a specific uh, video game that I've been playing uh, throughout uh, the entire holiday season and, you know, over the uh, last month. And uh, this is a brand new video for me because uh, I've never done an impressions video on a, a specific video game before. And uh, it was uh, only uh, today that uh, I actually got the Platinum Trophy for this game. Even though the game is not 100% completed as of yet, you know, I still have a few things uh, left to do in the game in, in order to consider it 100% completed. But uh, I really wanted to make time to do an impressions video on this video game because this video game has given me kind of a renewed interest in this generation of gaming because I really thought to myself that there was no way that I was ever going to get into this generation of gaming. You know, I'm kind of stuck in the past a little bit, you know, I don't have the opportunity, you know, to keep up, you know, with the newest and greatest trends in gaming. But uh, having the uh, opportunity to, uh, to get a PS4, you know, just before the holiday season, and I was really interested to give this game a try because of all the positive reviews that I actually seen for it. And, uh, and the thing is, is I never really kept up to date about what this game was, was going to be about. You know, you know, I had seen the scattered news articles he, uh, here and there. And, uh, and I've watched, you know, some of my uh, YouTube friends, you know, uh, play the demos. But uh, I've never been that kind of gamer. You know, I don't play demos. I don't try to build up hype for a specific game. You know, I have a lot of, I have a lot of patience. You know, I'm not going to try to read anything and everything about the game or try to look up as much information as I can. And uh, so I pretty much kind of kept I kept myself away from a lot of the information uh, regarding the game and uh, everything along those lines. And uh, and. It's, it's pretty easy to tell, you know, what this game is, you know, you've already seen the title of the video. And the, uh, and the video game that I'm going to give my impressions on is uh, Final Fantasy XV for the PS4. This is a video game that completely took me off guard. And it has been probably one of the most enjoyable video game experiences I've had maybe in the last five years guaranteed. And that is really bewildering to me because especially after like the mess of Final Fantasy 13 that I recently completed uh, about a year and a half ago, you know, uh, you know, back during the fall of uh, of 2015. And uh, and to be honest, I didn't think that game was really all that great either. I really didn't think that there was any way that Final Fantasy uh, could have redeemed itself. Because I hadn't really had a lot of hope, you know, especially for for the next generation of gaming, because it seemed like any time that, that they tried to revitalize, you know, an old license or, you know, put, put in a new entry, you know, they kept get getting further and further away, you know, from what, uh, from what, the, from what made these games great to begin with. But one of the biggest things that I've seen with gaming, especially over the last uh, 12 months, even in the first part of 2017, is that it seems like a lot of video game companies are really taking to heart trying to make their games good again to try to win their fans back. And I think some pretty good examples of that is, uh, is the newest Doom game. Uh, I haven't heard one bad review about that game. All my friends who've played it have absolutely loved it. You know, you get Final Fantasy XV, while not a perfect game, uh, has won a lot of Final Fantasy fans back. A lot of people uh, love, uh, love this game. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why I decided to buy it myself, is because the overwhelming response to it was positive. And, uh, and unfortunately, you know, I'm an old-school Final Fantasy fan, you know, I like Final Fantasy as, as a turn-based uh, RPG, uh, as a turn-based RPG, and I don't really gravitate towards the action-based uh, RPGs all that much, but they actually did an incredibly great job with it. 
And after seeing all the Stellar reviews and impressions from a lot of my friends, and uh, seeing the Stellar review that my favorite video game review site gave it, which is uh, RPG Fan, you know, I really wanted to give this game a try myself. And, uh, and another game that's won a lot of fans back recently is Resident Evil 7. Because when Resident Evil 6 came back, a lot of people really tore that game to death. And it seems like Resident Evil 7 did a really good job of, you know, winning a lot of the fans back. So it seems like, you know, a lot of video game companies and their established licenses are trying to get back to what made their games great while trying to be still innovative and new in the process. I think one of the reasons why uh, I really enjoyed Final Fantasy XV so much, you know, it even goes beyond the game because what made this game enjoyable to me is that this is the first game in a long time that my wife and I have actually played together. And that doesn't happen very often in my life. Um, you know, my wife took care of the main quests and the main story segments and I did all the side quests, and for, for anyone who's already played the game, you know the game has a lot of fetch quests, a lot of side quests, and stuff like that, and they don't really need, need to be done. You know, if you want to stick to the main story, you can probably get, get the main story completed in, you know, 20 to 30 hours. But I really wanted to try to get as much out of this game as humanly possible while I was still home. And it was just really enjoyable, you know, for my wife and I to just hand the controller back and forth and to actually play it and just be completely enthralled with how beautiful the game looks, how beautiful the world looks, and just kind of looking at ourselves and saying to ourselves, you know, this game is actually pretty good, as hard as it was for me to admit it, because I, for me, uh, Final Fantasy XIII left such a bad taste in my mouth that I really thought that, okay, well, the series is just going to keep going downhill and downhill and downhill, and, and it's not going to get any better, but I hate to say it, but Final Fantasy XV proved me wrong. And the, the thing is, is that uh, before we actually played this game, uh, you know, we actually wanted to get into the universe as much as we could, so before we even played the game, uh, we actually watched Kingsglaive. Uh, my wife didn't like it. I liked it just because, you know, I'm a, I'm a big action movie fan and I'm just for all for mindless entertainment as long as it looks pretty and it's got good fights and good explosions, I'm not going to complain. Uh, but, you know, the story isn't really all the greatest and, uh, you know, it definitely has its problems, but I definitely got my fun out of it. And, uh, and we also uh, watched the uh, short anime series, you know, Final Fantasy XV Brotherhood, which uh, both my wife and I have really enjoyed because it, it really goes into really good depth uh, with regards to Noctis' uh, relationship uh, with, uh, with his friends, uh, all uh, three of them. And it looks a little bit uh, into his past as well, ever since he was a kid up to, uh, up to being a teenager. So, so we went into this game trying to get as much of the overall story as much as possible so that we kind of had a feeling, you know, of what to expect going into the game. And it definitely helped, but, you know, a lot of people have said, you know, do you really, uh, do you really need to watch these things to really get into the game? And the answer is no, you don't really have to, but it is a bonus if it is something you're interested in. So, uh, so after watching those things, we actually put the game in and, you know, we started playing it. And uh, the biggest thing I really want to give credit to this game is the game is absolutely gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. You know, with regards to the environments and, and the enemy designs, but I think the biggest thing I really liked about the look of the game is how realistic the characters looked. And what I mean by realistic is that, you know, when you look at the faces of some of the characters and, you know, you look, uh, you look at some, some, of, some of the bare skin, you know, you can actually see freckles, you can actually see blemishes, you can actually see, you know, uh, you know uh, like marks on the body, just like physical imperfections, and it really amazed me with, with how beautiful the game looked. Even, even their out, outfits, like if they were wearing leather, like it really looked like leather. And, 
And, it, and it's just the amount of detail that they put into the game with regards to the tiniest things. You know, I could really commend them on that. And uh, there was never a part of me that ever felt that the game ever looked ugly. I don't think there's anything about the game that really looked ugly. I thought everything looked beautiful in the game. And uh, I was just completely fascinated with, with how beautiful the game looked. You know, I was so fascinated with the world in the game that uh, I would drive everywhere. And I wouldn't do the fast travel. I, I would actually, you know, waste the five to ten minutes just driving around and just and just spinning the camera 360 degrees all all the time just to just to see the world and just to see what they actually did to 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 make that world as beautiful as possible. And I have to admit they did an incredibly good job and it was and it was the right way to do it because like the biggest problem you know, with, with Final Fantasy XIII is, yes, it was a linear game, and it wasn't until, you know, very late in the game that the world kind of opened up a little bit, but, but in the grand scheme of things, it still felt tiny. But, uh, but the fact that, that you had so much to explore right at the start of the game, and even after the first few chapters, you know, you could just literally get lost in the world. And it was, and it was quite an undertaking, but, but I believe that's what a Final Fantasy game should be. You know, you should have the opportunity to travel where you want, when you want, and and just and just literally go anywhere you like, unless it's something integral to the story in which there's there are certain barriers that you have to go through. And uh, and it was actually just a wonderful experience because I remember, you know, you know the first couple of times uh, playing the game. You know, when you're out in the desert area, I never wanted to, to drive. I really didn't. I would rather. I would rather walk one or two miles, you know, to get to the destination I was going. It's probably one of the reasons why uh, Gladio's uh, survival skill got so high at the very start because I just enjoyed walking everywhere, no matter, no matter how how long it took me, and and I was even brave enough to to even walk walk in the dark, uh, very early in the game when you were specifically told not to. And it was just an overall enjoyable experience. Um, you know, another thing about the game is, you know, I think this game has one of the most likable Final Fantasy casts um, I've ever seen. Um, you know, usually, like, the problem with, with most Final Fantasy games, especially when it comes to the playable characters, is that, you know, you'll always have a few characters you like and a few characters that you don't like. But one of the greatest things about this game is that is that all the playable characters, all the four guys, they were all likable in their own way. You know, uh, you know, a lot of people have issues with uh, Prompto, but I didn't mind Prompto, I really didn't. I thought all of the characters bounced off each other really well. I thought all of them had their tra traits and their quirks that, that made them incredibly likable. And, and, and you know, by the end you actually really cared about these characters and, and the camaraderie that they actually have with each other. And, and it's really hard to find that in an RPG. It's really hard to find it, find a game in which you know you actually like all the playable characters. You, you know, you know. I've always made a habit in every RPG that I play that I try to level all my characters evenly, uh, even characters I don't like, just because you know I don't like to have anybody too uh, leveled up too high compared to to any of the other characters. So regardless if I like the character or not, I always try to to level them up the same. And uh, obviously, you never really had that issue in the game because the first four characters you have starting in the game are the four characters that that you have to end the game with. And you know, I could go into depth about what what makes each character likable, but there's enough YouTube videos, you know, talking about that. You know, one thing you have to understand with with my impressions when it comes to video games, uh, I'm not a very picky person. You know, I can usually forgive a game. For a lot of its faults, because I'm not one of those types of people that's going to nitpick over every little annoying thing. I'm not that kind of person. I'm never going to be that kind of person. You know, for me, as long as the game has more good points than bad points, then that's all I really care about. And I'm not going to be the type of person that's going to use a lot of fancy language to uh, to show you why I enjoy this game so much. 
because, you know, much, much of my life, you know, I always adopt this mentality that, you know, for me, simplicity is the spice of life. You know, I don't need to make things overly complicated, even though, you know, I consider myself a very descriptive person, but, you know, as long as I enjoy the game, you know, that's, that's all that really matters, because, because the thing is, is ultimately Final Fantasy XV is not a perfect game, and I don't believe a game, a game, or even any game can be perfect. It can be perfect for an individual, but it cannot be perfect overall because ultimately different games are going to appeal to different people. And the game definitely does have its problems. Um, you know, obviously, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the quests is literally padding. It's a lot of fetch quests. It's a lot of monster hunts. It doesn't really add much depth into the game, but, you know, it definitely can give you a break from things, you know, if you want to get away from, from the story for a while. Because... Uh, because even though I now have the Platinum Trophy for, for this game, I've already put 144 hours into it. And I can guarantee you three quarters of that time has been spent doing side quests. And have the side quests felt monotonous or annoying? Not to me. I never really got frustrated with the game. Not throughout the entire time I was playing it. You know, even doing the fishing, you know, uh, the photography, the cooking, the finding the recipes, uh, you know, doing the fetch quests and just going all over the place, like, it was never really annoying to me. Like, I never really hit an annoying point in the game until I hit the goddamn Pityos dungeon. And it just boggles my mind that action, <laughs> action-based RPGs should not have dungeons that involve platforming because it's so fucking unfair. You know, like, I got to the uh, a dungeon because it was a dungeon that I completely missed out on, and I had to give it up less than halfway through because I got too fucking frustrated with it. Because pretty much uh, everything in that dungeon, there's no enemies, but, you know, you got spikes and you got pits. And, you know, the, uh, uh, the running is very slippery and, you know, you have very tight corners and really small platforms that you have to jump on. And you're just falling and starting from the beginning and it's very easy to get really annoyed by it. But... But even though I don't think I will get that dungeon done by the, by the time I get home, um, I, uh, I'll definitely give it another try when, it, when I get back home in August because, you know me, you know, I'm a, I'm a sucker for punishment, so one way or another I'll find a way to, to, to get past that dungeon. And, uh, and to be honest, another thing that, uh, that annoyed me about the game is, uh, is the whole uh, flying regalia. You know, uh, you know, technically every Final Fantasy game has an airship of some sort, and you know the airship in Final Fantasy XV is uh, is technically the car that that the guys have been driving in. But I think it's really fucking unfair that I don't think this has ever existed in any other Final Fantasy game that you can actually crash the fucking airship. You can actually crash the car if you don't land it properly, or you can easily fly into something, and if you crash, it's game over. And so that's why I recommend that anytime you finish a dungeon or you try to get, get an important item, especially after you beat the main game, that you save every time you do it. Because nothing's worse than, than uh, getting something you've been trying really hard to do in the game, and then you get in your car and you fly away and you crash, and then you've got to start all over again. So that was, a, that was definitely a minor annoyance uh, in the game. But the thing is, is that these annoyances are only minor. Uh, for me, the game has been an incredibly pleasant experience, and it actually gives me a lot of hope about what the Final Fantasy VII Remake will turn into. Because, I'll be completely honest, you know, we're going to look at the, uh, the battle system in the game, and, you know, like I said, you know, I'm more for traditional turn-based, but, you know, I have played action-based battle systems before, you know, for, from the Tales series and a few other RPG series as well. And starting off, you know, I had a hard, really hard time adjusting to the battle system. You know, my wife got used to it uh, a lot better than what I did at first. And my wife despises action-based battle systems, except from Star Ocean. And she actually uh, learned the battle system a lot better than what I did. But, you know, the more I played it and the more I got used to it, you know, I actually, I actually started to excel at it. And, and I knew what I had to do in order 
to really get the most out of every battle and to uh, and it actually turned out to be a really enjoyable experience. You know, if the Final Fantasy VII Remake uses aspects of the Final Fantasy XV battle system, I I think that game has the potential to come out just just as good or maybe even better than Final Fantasy XV. And, uh, you know, I never really had any issues with it. You know, I didn't I didn't think any of the boss fights were in were really unfair. Uh, you know, obviously there were some boss uh, fights, uh, especially the giant snakes or you know the overpowered uh, samurai figures that would uh, that could kill you kill you in one strike or cast a ton of status effects on you. But that's really no different than than you know any other Final Fantasy game. You're always going to going to have really annoying enemies like that. I remember fighting Master uh, Tom, uh, Tom Berries. And that was really annoying. I went through so many health items to, to 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 try to fight those fuckers, and they were really unfair because they would kill you in like two or three strikes. So I pretty much used the majority of my mega elixirs and mega phoenixes to try to take those down. And uh, and even at the point that I'm in the game right now, uh, there's still a couple of really difficult uh, boss fights I still have left to do. Supposedly there's this level. 110 mech in one of the craters I tried to fight and I couldn't even put a dent in it. I was only like level 75 I think and there was another fight, a part of the side quest called the Wondrous Weapon and that was an, a, a level 120 uh, mechanical creature and that just that just literally raped me. So I need to, need to max my levels up to level 99 and hopefully uh, try those bosses again so I can get them beat once and for all. But I didn't really have any issues with the battle system. Um, you know, as much as the game tried to annoy me and I heard of some of the annoyances that some video game players had, it didn't really, it didn't really annoy me. It really didn't. I'm just used to... To, uh, maybe I'm a lot more forgiving towards annoyances in, in video games. You know, I can handle it a lot better just because I have a high amount of patience. But uh, I really had no issues with it. Um, uh, you know, uh, you know, by the end of it, I actually enjoyed getting into fights. And it doesn't, it didn't matter if I was uh, power leveled or not. You know, I any time I came across either a level ten or level twenty creature, and I'm like level 80, I'd always fight. I'd always, uh, I'd always like getting into fights, even though you know it wasn't really much of a challenge anymore. But uh, but I still love uh, love to do it. So I never really had any issues with with the battle system. It, it was a struggle to get used to at at first, and uh, but but eventually I got used to it. You know, you know the summonings are incredibly beautiful, even though. Uh, people have told me that, that the summons come, come completely at random. I've only managed to bring up three of them so far, which is uh, uh, Leviathan, uh, Ramu, and, uh, and Shiva. I haven't, uh, uh, the other ones haven't popped up yet. And, uh, but just overall, the game was a wonderful experience. I just remember, you know, there were days that I just did nothing but side quests. I would spend eight to nine hours a uh, uh, a day just just doing all these fetch quests, just doing all these monster hunts, and I never really thought of it as, as a grind because for me, I'm in no rush to get through a, an RPG story as much as possible. I'm I'm the type of guy, you know, I'm a I like to stop and smell the roses, you know. I want to try to enjoy everything that the game has to offer, and so any opportunity that I see a question mark pop up on the screen, I would immediately go right towards it. And there were periods of time in which I spent like 20 to 30 hours just on side quests alone before I even got back to the story. I think it really annoyed my wife to, uh, to a point because I was playing the game more than her. But uh, my wife has never been one for side quests or anything along, the, along those lines unless it's integral to the story. But like I said, you know, she, she got to do all the cool boss fights. She got to fight Le the Leviathan. And, and uh, Titan, and she uh, and she got to do some really excellent boss battles in the game, and I just stuck to the side quests, but I had no problems with that because I still got to watch her play it, and it was actually it was actually really nice to watch my wife play a video game again because she's been very critical about uh, about video games these days, and she has her reasons for for being critical about it, and and uh, and, and her complaints are justified, but it was actually nice 
for me and her to actually play a video game and get really into it and actually enjoy everything that it had to offer because to be honest, you know, with, with the long development cycle that Final Fantasy XV had, I really didn't have my hopes up for this game at all. But, uh, but this video game proved me wrong and I have no issue saying that whatsoever. And it was just really nice for my wife and I to, to, to really get into it and I don't care, you know, what people say, but, you know, I thought Arden was a wonderful villain. I thought he was, uh, he, he was a very charming asshole. You know, he, uh, you know, he always, you, you always had this impression that, you know, he was being charming and, and witty, but, you know, he always had, had something up, up his sleeve, and every time he was trying to annoy Noctis, you know, I, I actually got, got a really good kick out of it, because he really knew how to fucking piss him off, and, and, and it was actually quite fun to see at times. Now guys, I've the uh, I'm the type of person that I don't really care about spoilers, but uh, but thankfully at least going into this game, nothing was really spoiled to me. But uh, I never really went looking for spoilers as well because because I had read a lot of really great reviews about the game, but I didn't really look into anything about the game at all. But uh, I just want to give a fair warning. Uh, you know, the next topic that I'm going to talk about is going to include spoilers. And uh, I don't consider myself, you know, a very emotional person, especially when it comes to video games. You know, uh, you know, uh, there's been very few video games in my life that's ever made me choke up or, you know, kind of shed a tear a bit because because I was really moved by it. But uh, but I have no issues admitting that this game did choke me up a bit, especially at the end. Um. There was a scene in the game that uh, that it kind of uh, kind of gave, gave me a lump in my throat. I kind of I, I really choked up a bit about it because I knew what was happening. And like I said, spoiler alert. And it was basically the scene uh, just before the final battle. And uh, Noctis is getting ready to climb up the steps up to his throne room to meet Arden. And he says, you know, goodbye to his his three friends. And that was a really tough scene to watch. Um, it kind of hit me really hard because I kind of knew what was going to happen but I wasn't too sure but then you found out by, uh, 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 by the end part of the final fight what actually happened to everybody afterwards. But just that scene itself of just of just Noctis knowing what he had to do and the fact that it was so hard for him to leave his friends behind. But he knew he had to do it in order to accomplish what his goal was. And it was just the overall, uh, it was just the overall, like, tone of the scene. And just the sentence where he said, stand tall, my friends. And it just really hit me really hard because, uh, because throughout this game, you you got to see these guys in, interact with, with each other. You you got the to to see their humorous side, their serious side, and you know these guys were really best friends, you know by the uh, by the end of it, and they still remained really good friends despite all the shit that's happened to them. And uh, that scene really choked me up a bit because uh, back home, uh, I have three three friends, like really good friends, you know, all four of us, you know, we hang out together, you know, we play Settlers of Catan, and uh, and we watch like 80s action movies together and that kind of thing, and it's just like, like these are three of the best friends a guy could ever ask for, and you know, I got really, um, I got a few other really good friends in my real life as well, and, and, and in a way, you know, it kind of slightly reminded me of that, but, uh, but uh, for the first time in a long time, this this game got me emotional, and it's been a long time since a game actually did that. And uh, you know, I've heard you know some people say that you know that the ending was really sad. It got people teared up. It got people choked up. And and I think you know if a game can do that to to a player, it if it can get them emotional, if they can get them so involved with the story and the characters, then the game did something right. And it was just heartbreaking at the end. Like I said, spoiler alert, but, you know, everybody died. <laughs> and, uh, but, 
in a way, they did it in such a way that uh, you understood why. And uh, even though, you know, the director of the game has said, well, the ending's kind of open for a uh, for interpretation, but, you know, that's what I take out of it. And, uh, but, uh, you know, in the end, the, game, the ending of the game is a little tragic, but it's justified, and ultimately, you know, the... Uh, the game does end on a happy note because Noctis fulfilled his destiny and the world was saved, which in the end is what really matters. And uh, I think ultimately, you know, the game is a very wonderful experience. You know, it actually gives me hope, you know, that Final Fantasy still has plenty of room to actually improve. And I think this this title was a title that actually redeemed itself. I think uh, I think if they can keep with this approach and keep improving on this approach, I think that any other Final Fantasy game that comes after this, you know, has the potential to even bring more fans back to the Final Fantasy license. And uh, ultimately, you know. The game is an unfinished game. There's still a lot of story left to tell. There's still a lot of things you can do in that game. You know, everyone knows the scene where Gladio leaves the group for for an entire chapter, and you don't know what happens to him, and he comes back with a couple of scars, and you don't know why. But you know, I've read I've read articles in which you know they are going to put in a lot more, uh, you know, a lot more uh, free DLC into the game, and and that's one of the reasons why. Like, I actually love this game so much that uh, that I actually bought the season pass. I bought all the extra items. You know, I bought uh, uh, I bought a couple of skins. I bought a brand a few brand new weapons. Uh, you know, I even done the, the uh, you know whatever extra content that they actually offered. I I bought it all because because that's how much I really enjoyed the game and. Uh, once they put more story segments into the game, because I think there are certain story uh, segments that they can tell during the world of ruin, and you know the uh, the ten years that you know Noctis uh, disappeared close to close to the end of the game, and there's even certain story segments they can do throughout the 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 early parts of the game as well, and I really look forward to seeing what Square Enix is really going to do with that game. But uh, ultimately. You know, I think this is one of the better Final Fantasy games I've actually played, and I would actually put this Final Fantasy game quite possibly in my top five of the Final Fantasy game, uh, games that I've ever played. It's not the best game. Uh, I really wish, you know, the game was technically finished in a sense that whatever that they were going to add was already involved in the game to begin with, but you know, I can forgive the game uh, game for that because well, what they did put in the game was adequate enough and, and I'm perfectly happy with what they offered and I look forward to any bonus content that they do put in this game because I am going to play it and I'm going to try my, my best to enjoy it to, uh, to my heart's content. And uh, in all honesty, you know, if, if any of my friends are still on the fence, you know, about about playing uh, the Final Fantasy XV, I highly recommend you get it. And just go into it with like open eyes and and try to be a little forgiving towards the game's flaws because because it's not a perfect game and the flaws that it did, that it does have you know is is pretty visible but I think for the for the most part it has been a mostly positive experience and if the other Final Fantasy games can take elements from this game to make itself better then it's something that I absolutely look forward to. So anyway guys, those are my impressions on Final Fantasy XV and this is the first game that I've ever played for, for my PS4 and even though uh, I won't be buying many games for the, for the PS4 uh, right now, you know, who knows in four to five years time you know, I'm glad that the first game that I've actually played for, for that system was a wonderful and enjoyable experience. And I sincerely hope, to anyone that watches this video, I, I sincerely hope you, you have enjoyed the game as much as I have. And if not, that's perfectly okay as well. Because remember, when it comes to personal taste, it's all sub subjective. What may be appealing to one gamer may not appeal to the next gamer. And that's perfectly understandable. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed my impressions on Final Fantasy XV, and as always,
Take care, and I wish you nothing but the best. Later.